Next on BYU Sports Nation, pressure pushing down on me, pushing down on you. It's football rivalry eve for BYU and Utah. Which side feels it the most? The role turnovers could play tomorrow and how Utah has used them to win eight in a row. Plus, where will BYU quarterback Zach Wilson make the biggest jump heading into his sophomore season? We'll ask former QB Riley Nelson. Let's go! This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Thursday, August 28th, get ready for it. Game day eve. Wherever. Yeah, it's Wednesday. And I wish however, it was Thursday. Wednesday, August 28th. I was like, it's today? Wednesday. I thought, I thought it was game day eve. You know I want to be there. Oh, good. I, t- I said, listen, let's just play the game. Yeah. Okay, just kidding. It's Wednesday. All Sorry, good. we're still one day away. All, all good, but it is first and 15. <laughs> wherever and however you're connected, great to have you with us. I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up with the guy who can make Greg Rebell cry, Jerem Jordan. I don't think I can, uh, but yesterday on uh, the season debut of BYU Football with Klein Stocky, thanks to you, uh, those of you who watched it or attended, that was great. Um, by the way, it's coming up right after us, if you haven't seen it. It was awesome. Um, I'm a little biased. Uh, Klein Stocky got really emotional when during the Q&A portion, someone asked what his favorite memory with Lavelle Edwards was. It was, I mean, instant emotion for Klein Stocky. He loves that man, as we all do, but he had an especially close relationship as a senior captain in the final year of Lavelle Edwards' uh, tenure right at BYU. So, uh, special time last night in Studio C. Show number one. Yeah. Of year number four in the Kalani Satake era at BYU. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Many more to come. Today's show lineup loaded. It includes the last quarterback to lead a 10-win BYU season, Riley Nelson in studio. What was Max Hall like during the Utah game? I'd like to hear that from Riley, who was Max's backup. Mm -hmm. How well do Kalani Satake and Kyle Whittingham know each other? Lauren Franken McLean goes between the lines with both head coaches in a sit-down interview during Rivalry Week. Plus, a trivia challenge from the BYU Sports Nation listener line. You ready? Always. For today's listeners and watchers, here are today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. BYU football and the season opener against Utah now. Oh, let's see. I'm going to do the math on the air. Never a safe thing. Roughly 38 hours away from kickoff. Head coach Kalani Satake on his team's current mental state. Our guys are really, and they're anticipating this game, and they're excited for it, and I'm I'm excited for them because the hard work, you know, that they put in, I'm excited to see what they can do, not just this game, but this season. I think this just happens to be the first game of the year, and we've been chomping at the bit for this season to start. That last night from BYU Football with Kalani Sitake, which you can watch immediately following BYU Sports Nation today at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. Kickoff for the game tomorrow, set for 10.20 p.m. Eastern, 7.20 Pacific. At Lavelle Edwards Stadium, pregame coverage begins with countdown to kickoff on BYU TV at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. You can also listen to a full pregame show on BYU Radio starting at the same time. Well, they're 15 minutes later, actually. Oh, they're 15 minutes later. They go true two hours before. We go 2.15. All right. Michael Davis is listed as the starting, a starting cornerback for the L.A. Chargers headed into week one. He was undrafted, uh, cut by the Chargers in 2017, signed on as a practice player, and now heads in to his third season as a starter for the Chargers, who you could argue are a top six, eight, or eight team in the NFL. Michael Davis got benched his senior season at BYU in 2016. For Diane Gawalaku. And now he's starting in the National Football League. Impressive. BYU women's soccer makes a huge jump in the latest United Soccer Coaches poll from unranked to number 14. Winning two road games in the SEC will do that for you. The Cougars at 2-0 and with wins against Alabama and Mississippi State. Get ready for their home opener this Friday against Southern Utah at Southfield. And the BYU men's cross-country team is ranked number two in the preseason U.S. TFC CCCA rankings. And the women's team is number six. Okay. Wow. How okay. about that? <laughs> Diljeet and Ed got a good thing going. Oh, man. With good. BYU cross-country and track and field. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. 
You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. As I just mentioned, we are 38 hours and change away from kickoff at Lavelle Edwards Stadium in an historic rivalry matchup between BYU and Utah. For the first time ever, these teams will meet to open the season. Utah comes in with more hype than that program has ever experienced in an offseason. Preseason Pac-12 favorites. Number 14, their highest AP ranking ever. They bring back one of the best running backs in college football, a senior quarterback, arguably the best defensive line in college football to take on a BYU team that 1 million percent is upset minded and loves that their counterparts are ranked and receiving this type of hype with the game tomorrow, Jerem. It's tomorrow. Let's <laughs> go. It doesn't feel real. Woo! Which team is feeling the most pressure or who on the team is feeling the most pressure right now? It probably should be BYU, but it's Utah. Utah's the team that's supposed to do everything amazing, right? Ranked 14th, old man Lee Corso picking them to go to the title game. Like, what? They've won eight in a row against BYU. Supposed to win the Pac-12. Listen, I think Utah is on edge a little bit with BYU. Here's why. Yes, they've won eight in a row. But last year, some punk kid that used to be in their stance was up 20 with 16 minutes to go, and BYU blew it. BYU blew it. Utah got lucky in that one. They got lucky that BYU didn't finish the deal, didn't push the pedal down, step on their throat, and end the streak with a freshman. Oh, Utah got lucky. The Cougars are hungry. They focused all offseason on this. You know what Utah's not focused on? Beating BYU. They have bigger goals. What's BYU's biggest goal this season? Tell it to me. Say it. To beat Utah. To beat Utah. It's not to win 10 games. It's not to finish ranked. It's not to do anything else but beat stinking Utah. BYU, beat your rivals. BYU's all in. Listen, even if Utah loses this game, they can still accomplish every single goal they have for this year. Win the Pac-12, go to the Pac-12 title game, go to the semifinal, and have the greatest season in Utah history. All of that can still happen. The Utes aren't focused on this one to the same degree that BYU is. Is Utah more talented? I would argue with the ones, not necessarily. I think the ones are a good matchup. We saw it last year. We've seen how close these teams have been recently, right? Some in the local media want to say it's not competitive. It's obviously been competitive. Okay? Utah is feeling the most pressure right now, undoubtedly. One, I can't get over the fact that you said Utah got lucky last year. Utah got lucky. I'm so happy that you said that. Yeah, I think BYU, BYU blew it. BYU was up 20? Yeah. No, Utah, Utah did well to win that game. Don't get me wrong. But BYU lost that game. Oh. You're up 20 with 16 minutes to go? Come on. Got to finish the deal. Yeah. Credit to Utah for coming back and winning the game, right? Utah is feeling the most pressure, and specifically I think it's the coaching staff, Jaron, because they have the heavy burden of convincing their players to not buy into all of this preseason hype. This is new ground. Yeah. They have never encountered – this type of challenge. These are uncharted waters for Utah's football program. Most validating preseason ever, right, for the program. And so it that's, feels that's, great. That's great. It right, feels for great for them, yeah. but this is more of a burden for coaches trying to convince their players not to buy in. You got to go win the Pac-12 before you can say you're Pac-12 champions and go to the Rose Bowl for the first time. And, oh, by the way, you open the season on the road against a BYU team that is more motivated to beat you than probably ever before in the 94 meetings, soon to be 94 meetings, of this long-storied rivalry showdown. So how do you maneuver through all of that off-season hype and keep your team grounded. And then get in the game, and you got a new offensive coordinator, and it's going to be super loud and crazy, and you're expected to dominate this BYU team. You're expected to win. Like, nobody is thinking BYU should beat Utah on their home field. Like, if Utah wins, it's like, hey, congratulations. You did what you were supposed to do. Right, which is not a great feeling. It's nice when you do something unexpected that's positive, right? And that can be used as a real... Uh, weapon for BYU tomorrow as they mentally prepare for this game. So the pressure is on Utah and Utah's coaching staff to maneuver their team through all of this. Topic two, turnovers have played such a big role in the rivalry. During the eight-game losing streak, BYU's minus 11 in margin, which uh, this just in, not good. 
losing the turnover battle in seven of eight. Can BYU beat Utah without winning the turnover battle? Normally I would say no, but I feel like BYU has enough offense now that they could overcome losing the turnover battle, let's say by, I don't know, one. It can't be a big margin. If Utah's plus two in the turnover battle, I don't think BYU will win the game. But I think the Cougars could be minus one and still have enough offense and being on their home field and the energy that comes from that, they could probably work through a scenario like that. Last year it was even. So we saw what happened with BYU when the turnover battle was even. Still, Utah scored a defensive touchdown against the Cougars to start their scoring. So while the turnover battle was even, boy, it was a costly turnover for BYU early in the second half. I think the Cougars are capable of doing it as long as they're within one of Utah because BYU has probably the most explosive offense overall they have had in this series, I want to say, since, good grief, Probably Max Hall and Andrew George well, and, we, we and Dennis Hunter. We think. Yeah, we I think yeah. that BYU's offense has more explosive prowess than they've had in a very long time. If BYU's even with Utah in each of the last eight games, BYU probably wins a couple of those games. A few of them. But they weren't, right? That's a credit to Utah. Utah's calling card has been defense. Last year, they cranked up the offense a bit, and they won nine games in the Pac-12, Went, won the South for the first time. That's not a coincidence. If they can have all three facets playing pretty well, they have a really good to great defense, right? Special teams have been great. I don't think it'll be great this year. I think it'll be good at best. We'll see with those guys, of course, right? Just like the BYU offense. But, uh, you know, BYU hasn't taken care of the ball. They haven't. And to some degree, turnovers are lucky. Others are skill-based. It's hard to know. A, you throw it to a guy, you pick it off, right? Um, a fumble, right? You, you have to force those, but someone can hold on. It's kind of weird that way. Last year, the, the margin was even, but Utah scored a pick six, and it ended up being an eight-point game. In fact, BYU... Has a, Utah has scored seven defensive yeah. touchdowns in the last eight games. Seven. And when the margin is so tight, that is a huge play in the game. BYU's got to take care of the ball. But even when they have in the one game, there was one game where BYU was what, plus four in 2016? Or was 20, it plus, plus three? three. They had, they plus had six. Three? BYU was yeah. plus three with Taysom Hill and Jamal Williams. Still lost that game. So not every game is created equal in how it plays out. But if BYU can win the turnover battle, they have a much better chance of winning this game. Take care of the football and get a few defensively, right? I think if BYU can win special teams, related but unrelated to this, if BYU can win the special teams battle, which I don't know that they have in the whole streak, now we're talking about a difference maker in what has always been a tight game. BYU plus three in 2016, but that was the most anemic style of offense that BYU has had in quite a while. Year one under Ty Detmer and Jamal Williams and Taysom Hill covered a lot of the sins for lack of offense. Well, BYU couldn't run in that game. They were bad. So if BYU has a different style of offense, I know it's all hypotheticals and what ifs. And it's great not to have a first year OC. It's a second year OC. Yes. Now. So I that think, matters. I think that things could be different. If BYU is plus three in this year's rivalry game, 100% they will win the game. You should you win like ninety two percent plus when you're plus two. Yes, plus one it's like eighty five or something crazy. Yeah, it's crazy how much of a difference that statistic can factor into a game. On to topic three, Jerem. Zach Wilson played in a one score rivalry game last year against Utah. Unfortunately, it was a one score game after BYU led by twenty at two different points mm. in last year's game in Salt Lake City. If it comes down to a one-score game or a final drive, how confident are you in the sophomore signal caller, Zach Wilson, in that game-winning drive-type situation? I'm hoping he's much better, and I think that he's grown a lot. In our conversations with him, we've learned some things. Also, if you want to really get to know somebody, you don't talk to the person. You talk to those close to them, around them. They'll tell you the real story. And the real story we are being told is that Zach Wilson has put in so much time in this offseason and has grown as a quarterback. Uh, during the summer, he organized more film sessions with the team and said, hey, married guys, bring your wives so it's not taking away from family time per se. Let's hang out. Let's watch more film than we've ever watched. Last year, BYU... Day night with Zach Wilson and his footage. Yeah. There's a lot of <laughs> girls on campus that would love to participate in that, right? <laughs> He has a girlfriend. Uh, we should acknowledge that Wilson and co. made it certain that certain games weren't close last year. 
Hawaii, UMass, New Mexico State, Western Michigan weren't close. Those were four wins. But in the three one-score games, BYU lost those games. Uh, that Zach started, right? Uh, NIU by one, Boise State by five, Utah by eight. BYU had possession or possessions to win in all of them. Obviously, Boise State is the freshman moment for Zach where he takes a sack and time runs out. I think he learned things. He only threw three t- interceptions all year. One was against NIU when BYU had a chance to go get a field goal and win. In the Utah game, BYU became injured, a little bit passive, and didn't produce the game-winning drive. But I feel like Zach has grown a lot. I feel like he understands the offense with a second-year coordinator. I think in the spring he had to develop more of the mental game as opposed to the physical game as he recovered. I'm confident he'll be, uh, he'll be better. How much better? We'll see quickly. Maybe that's the biggest step he takes forward this year is his ability to win a close game. And I imagine that with this schedule, we will see BYU in quite a few close games, especially early in the season. I'm confident in Zach Wilson because he's a confident dude, regardless of the scenario. I just don't think he fears anything. And sometimes that can backfire because, you know, he feels like he's got the type of mentality of, let's see, Matt Bushman's uh, double teamed and there is safety over the top help. So there's a chance that he could be triple teamed, but I'm good enough that I can fit it into this window. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw it to Matt Bushman anyway. Like he's kind of got that type of mentality, which is good. I want, I want my quarterback to have that type of confidence that he can fit it into the smallest of windows, but that will backfire at times in a one score situation. I don't feel like he fears that at all. In fact, I feel like he is of the unique uh, lineage and unique fraternity that wants to be in that situation. There are a lot of people that say, oh, I live for this situation, but they don't really. They don't really. Right. right. Talks is cheap. Sure. There, there are only a handful that really relish being in that yeah. high pressure, one score type of situation. Anything and everything that I have heard about Zach Wilson and experienced myself talking with him tells me that he is of that ilk. He is in that unique fraternity of give me the ball down four or down two late in the game, and I'm going to go win it with my team. I'm very confident that he can and will win games when it's that tight. I imagine in this game he could have an opportunity to do that given how close these games typically are. And, uh, you know, the, the classic quarterbacks that we always remember produce a game-winning drive and moment that is etched in time and space for Cougar fans forever. So he could have that chance in this game. Ugh. The hairs on my arm just stood up a little bit. We don't remember the guys that don't make those plays. We don't talk about them. Right? Before we get to our question of the day, a reminder. Hit it! Countdown to the youths. One day away. One day Tomorrow. away. Wow. Doesn't it feel great? Wow. Doesn't it I feel great? I can't believe it's tomorrow. I talked to Reno Mahe wow. last night at his uh, charity gala with uh, Steve Tate. And... Uh, he told me that BYU was going to win by two touchdowns. So nice. Did you I, end up hosting that? I no, no. Oh, you didn't host Hans, it. It was Hans Olsen. Oh, okay. I just, I just went to do a little story on it. Oh, nice. And uh, for Kissel. Yes, sir. Yes, nice. sir. But uh, I put on the blue goggles and I thought, wow, Reno, that's a, that's a great outlook, man. That's, that's a great <laughs> outlook. Not surprisingly, Steve told me that Utah was going to win by two touchdowns. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> that's wild. It's okay. One day yeah. away, baby. Here we go. Coming up, Between the Lines sits down with Kyle Whittingham and Kalani Satake to explore their friendship in a rivalry. But first, Riley Nelson, former quarterback. He made some studio. of those plays. We'll ask him where he's seen the most growth in Zach Wilson. And I want to know, Riley, what was Max Hall like during the rivalry games? We're going to go into that next. This is BYU Sports Nation. Two families are going to battle it out in fun and intense games for a chance to win $10,000. This is Battle of the Ages. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Join us tomorrow for a special two-hour edition of Countdown to Kickoff on BYU TV as Dave Blaine, Spencer, David, Brian, and Lauren prepare you for the season opener with the Cougars and Utes. We'll see the Cougar Walk in its entirety. The guys will warm up on the field. Tons of cool features. Ready for that one. Tomorrow, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. There are many historic elements to what is happening tomorrow. Yes, BYU and Utah will play for the first time ever in a Mm -hmm. season opener. And for the first time ever, you can watch the entirety of the Cougar Walk. Yeah, countdown to two kickoff. hours, man. 
So Two great. Hours. Love it. Let's, let's do this. Live from Studio B with your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play, I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. A reminder, not only is Countdown to Kickoff two hours, BYU Sports Nation is two hours. It's all-day football, essentially, tomorrow. Yeah, we're going to do the show, and then I'm going to go to the control room for Countdown. It's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna be, and then we're going to hopefully party until 4 a.m. Yeah. Another man who's working basically all day tomorrow and making his debut yeah. on BYU Radio, among other outlets, as the color analyst for BYU football alongside Greg Rubel is Riley Nelson. Riley? Welcome back to Studio B. Tomorrow is what I hope is the beginning of a five-day weekend. I'm all for Thursday, (laughs) week one opener, BYU victory. We all call in sick on Friday, and it carries into Monday, Labor Day. We don't want to call in sick Friday, though, personally. Yeah, that's true. Okay, the rest of us. Yeah, we're we're excited about Friday. I don't know that we will go to sleep on Thursday night if BYU wins, because we got to get up early and do the show. Just make sure, yeah, we'll make sure the makeup, you Uh know, goes a little bit heavy on the under That's worth five hours of sleep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, for, sure. Your, for sure. Your yeah. mascara might smear, you know, <laughs> if you lose this, whatever. Riley, we've been talking about pressure, and there is uh, a loaded conversation within this topic on both sides as to who is feeling the most pressure. Is it BYU? Is it Utah? Both teams dealing with their own pressure situation. The Cougars obviously want to snap an eight-game losing streak, but then Utah is in uncharted territory with the most preseason hype they have ever dealt with. So which team's feeling more pressure to win this game tomorrow? I think locally it's pretty equal. Both fan bases feel, you know, are in, here in the state are putting equal amounts of pressure on their team to either uphold the streak or to break the streak. But I think Utah has more because of the national expectations that have been heaped on them. Like, the, I, to be quite honest, one of the best things that could have happened heading into this game was Lee Corso throwing them up there in the national championship game, right? <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Yeah, Lee! <laughs> like, not even, yeah. not even the f- top final four, which a bunch of people have kind of, like, put that out as a feeler, like, tried to walk like that in there. Horse. Yeah, they're a dark horse sure, sleeper. But sure. not only did he – he had them beating Clemson and playing <laughs> Alabama in the national championship game. So I'm all for that. Like, let's – BYU fans, get out there. Uh, at tweet or quote or whatever your favorite social media, remind all the Utah players that that's the expectation set for them. <laughs> That'll increase some of the pressure. And from BYU's standpoint, like, what's really the difference? Uh, I, I, and I know people will say, well, a lot. But between an eight-game losing streak and a nine-game losing streak, they're both pretty bad, right? We yeah. find ourselves – so go out there, play loose, let it all hang out. In my opinion – Far more pressure on Utah than there is on BYU. The conversation right now that we're hearing and discussing things with the coaches and players, they are very loose. It is exactly that. And if I'm Utah, I'm tight because now, wait, we have to live up to this all of a sudden? They're supposed to win. We didn't choose this, right? And they're very good. They're supposed to win. Yet, the line is five. That tells me that we're expecting another close game. So the Week 0 game, Miami-Florida, not to talk too much East Coast, but uh, Florida's ranked preseason 8, and yet Miami, you know, people are – it's very similar scenarios, right? Utah's preseason 14, people were projecting for Miami, kind of a 6-6 and year, rebuilding, they're starting a young quarterback. quarterback, Yes, all these things. And you come out of that game, how are you feeling about Florida? Disappointment. How did they let Miami hang? Miami was leading late into that game. Had and the yet, ball. Yeah, right and, how, and how are you looking at Miami? Like, oh, they're going to be better than possible. So even in a losing scenario, you're feeling optimistic about, about Miami and a little bit pessimistic about Florida. That's the pressure. That, that's another way to articulate the pressure that's on Utah's shoulders heading into this game and the opportunity that's out there for BYU to let it hang out. There's no holds barred. It's like you said, the worst case scenario is an eight game losing streak goes to nine. Nobody's expecting you to do anything otherwise. And so it's all upside from here. Riley Nelson with us on BYU Sports Nation, former BYU quarterback, now the BYU radio color analyst for all 12 football games you, this season. How are you feeling about that? T- tomorrow is the start of a new era on the radio. I'm pumped. I could not be more excited. The- to get to start it off at home in Lavelle Edwards Stadium, obviously, is a, is a special treat in the rivalry game. Couldn't be more excited about that. And then we head to Knoxville in front of 107,000 people for, for the next one. So the opportunities, again, as, a, as an alumni, as a former player, like I, I'm going to say we. Like we've got a great schedule. For, and I know I'm not that anymore. But to be able to participate with those, uh, you know, be still part of the program, even if it's an ancillary part, and to be able to travel with them uh, to experience these games a- as a very close observer uh, is an opportunity that I'm just tickled pink and I hope to take advantage of. Riley, you played on the last BYU team that beat Utah in 2009. Hard to believe it's been a decade of drought yeah. 
from victory against the Utes. But you were Max Hall's close friend, confidant, backup quarterback at the time. And some people think that there is this Max Hall curse. Hopefully it's snapped tomorrow if there is. But what was Max Hall like during a rivalry contest against Utah specifically? Yeah, it was interesting. I expected it was night and day. The week leading up was pretty status quo. Like I thought Max would have been more amp, but by that time, you know, he had started. He had started and won more games than any other quarterback in BYU history, and um, so there wasn't. It didn't kick in till that Saturday, but when that Saturday came on, like there was no talking to him. There was no getting through. Like he oh, it was, was no hitter thing. Yeah. He, I mean, Max was just in the zone, and then and then through the game, like it was. I, normally, there was uh, uh, there would be some joking back and forth, or I would be like, "Hey, they're saying on the headset that they're seeing this. Maybe you want to look out for it." He was not having any of that. He was locked in. <laughs> he was, he, and I, I say this: I don't think he was literally headbutting Lyman, but he was doing it with his words. <laughs> He was in. He would normally let uh, Andrew George and Dennis Pitta kind of do their thing, but he was grabbing face masks, getting in ears, making sure Harvey. He kind of let Harvey do his thing a lot of times, but he was rallying the troops, like had everybody on a short, tight leash, and obviously was able to pull out that overtime win, which was the last time we beat him. So, uh, you know, Zach's got to be Zach, but if he incorporates a little bit of Max, I think Max was able to get good response out of his teammates and the rest of us out there, and so we'll see. Do you feel like Zach has some Max in him? A little bit. I think uh, Max. I think is far more intense. I think Zach, at least uh, externally intense. I think Zach has that same uh, intensity inside and that self-imposed expectation. But he's also got a little bit more exterior laid backness. And one of the things that I like about Zach, as opposed to Max, Max was so intense and so dialed in that if, if things didn't quite go as planned. There was a poten- it was kind of hard to snap out of it and get back, where I think Zach is able to slough off uh, negative things, which will bode well against not only this rivalry game, uh, but you know the tough schedule that he's facing this year. He feels focused. That's the yeah. word for me with, with Zach Wilson. Right, and not, but not neurotic, not over the top. Yes. It's, uh, it's, he's, he's got the perfect balance. Uh, I think part of that is whenever you talk to him he's this is none of this is a surprise to him this has been part of his master personal plan for years right and so it's this is just what he's been expecting since the time he was 11 12 13 years old and i think that's where that kind of inner confidence comes i i think you guys would agree it doesn't cross over into arrogance now all that being said he is. Don't think that defensive coordinators uh, that he's flying under their radar. Everybody's paid attention that, like, man, he finished the season really strong. He's got some natural abilities, and th- these defensive coordinators and coaches would like nothing more than to put a stop to all of the momentum that he's gaining as a player. So it will not be without his struggles, but I do not think those struggles will compound, and they definitely will not spiral negatively. I think he will appropriately c- contextualize those and use them each as stepping stones or building blocks into his foundation is a winning and successful quarterback here at BYU. Riley Nelson with us on BYU Sports Nation. When you look at Zach's progression from his freshman seven starts now into his sophomore season, where do you feel like he's going to take the biggest leap with his on-the-field production? Yeah, you were talking about in the earlier segment uh, the the kind of last drive. Can he take it? And I think that's one of the situations. To, to understand that you – while you are extremely focused on getting, you know, get, scoring the touchdown or getting yourself in a field goal position or doing whatever you have to do to win the game, you cannot press that because the second you start to press, you get negative reactions. Steve Young, one time he was around, used to say that the best thing you can do in a two minute in a, or a scenario is the same thing you would have done in the first two minutes of the game because the likelihood is that the other 21 guys on the field are trying to do something different, something extra, which actually brings their level of execution down. And if you can if you can execute at a consistent level, then you're going to be the one that shines. You're going to be the one that stands out. And I think that is the greatest opportunity for Zach. You mentioned the Northern Illinois game, of course, the Boise game. He had those uh, close games where we were, he had the opportunity and it didn't bounce his way. I mentioned earlier he's going to use those as learning experiences. I think he's done that, and I think that's the opportunity for him to take the biggest step. Turnovers have played such a massive role in this series. BYU is minus 11 in the eight-game losing streak. Seven defensive touchdowns by Utah. Do you feel like BYU can win the game if they don't win the turnover battle, or is it a they have to be plus in this? 
I think they can. Uh, I don't think they can be in a deficit, but I think they can tie it. So if it's one to one or zero to zero, so last year it was zero. Yeah, so yeah. So not not winning. I don't think they have to win, but I don't think they can lose it. I think we can get away with a tie or being in the plus. And the reason is is because uh, from I think from a fan standpoint, and also there's you know Utah likes to tout that there's nobody in their program that's tasted defeat um, by BYU. Similarly, there's no one in BYU's program that's beat Utah, and so belief plays a big part into this and uh, not only the players I I don't think it's as much the players on the sideline but the entire fan base in Lavelle Edwards Stadium and even watching at home if they if we give up a defensive or special team touchdown that doubt of oh here we go again starts to creep in and that can be a kind of venom that spreads throughout the rest of the game so if if they avoid that I don't think they have to do anything above and beyond but if they can at least avoid that negativity I think BYU is capable of beating Utah straight up. I don't think they need a gift of a fumble return for a touchdown or a pick six or a return punt. They can beat them straight up, but they can't lose it. I'd take five turnovers in the first quarter from Utah. Oh, if Utah yeah, yeah. If gave BYU those went five up 35 BYU? nothing, I'd take it Yeah, in the first. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Who's calling you in the yes, middle of the Yes, in the middle of the segment. No, you well, it. yeah, no, here's the thing. Sorry about that. So, but we had that. So you're are you referring to the Vegas Bowl, yes. obviously. I take the risk. But what about the, was it the next year when they gave, they coughed it up six first, times? Yes, they coughed it up six times. Ironically, we coughed first, it up five, didn't we? The, three. Over three. But the okay. first play of the game, the first offensive play yeah. of the game pick, for BYU was a pick six. Yeah. Was None a of pick that. six. How about, how about BYU does that? Boom, pick six, up seven nothing. Let's so, that, go. so that's the biggest. You mentioned seven defensive touchdowns for Utah. Uh, and uh, were there any special teams touchdowns thrown in there? I know I'm kind of asking you to I don't pull out stats. I don't, think I don't remember. A, I don't remember of any of that. No, yeah. me neither. But regardless, like, we don't even have one. Like, it's seven to zero. <laughs> so when we talk <laughs> about Lara yeah, that's I, crazy. I know. Yeah. And, and when you look on averages, I think a defensive touchdown happens, I think, once about every three games. If you look at the global average, there Utah's averaging almost one every rivalry game. It's nuts. It is crazy. And, so, and, and they're number one in the Pac-12 yeah. in that era in defensive touchdowns. It's not like it's just against BYU. It's against everybody. Right. And so, and, and look, they architect their program that way, right? The whole ball that they play is offense, do not screw it up for the defense, and defense, we're going to put you in positions to wreak havoc and make an absolute absolute momentum shifting play like they've done in the past so it's got to shift our way at some point but even if it doesn't I'm confident BYU can still pull it out I can't believe I'm going to say this and we'll finish here but in terms of the head-to-head position group matchups it's it's a fun conversation to have I think BYU for the first time in this rivalry series in the last decade may have an advantage in the kicking game and this could prove huge tomorrow one because Field position battle, I think, especially in the BYU-Utah game, is enormous. And then making field goals. Utah doesn't have a proven kicker for the first time since before Louis Sakota in 2005 and six. It's crazy. Yeah, and that in close games like this that have come down to so many special teams plays, I'm really looking forward to that, to them finally being in a position where they're searching for answers and BYU being in a position of like, we've got a guy that has kicked game-winning kicks, and he's come back from his mission, and guess what? He's kicking the ball even further and more accurate than he was before. And uh, that that's one. I also, look, I know Huntley's getting a lot of praise, and, and I don't want to hype up Zach because I think that I want to let him progress and give him that latitude. But I also think BYU has a distinct – I think we have the – you look at – go position group versus position group. The most important position in football is quarterback, and I think BYU has an advantage there. Now, you can argue the players, you know, maybe some of the skill positions around them on Utah, but Zach is, Zach is more accurate. I think he's equally as lethal with his legs. And he's also not coming off uh, – I know they're both kind of coming off injuries, but Zach's was much more one of – it was overuse. It was kind of fixing a problem – he didn't get knocked out of a game by getting driven into the ground and having his collarbone snapped. So Tyler Huntley's going to have to overcome that while dueling against, and I know they're not on the, that's one of the cliches, quarterbacks are never on the field at the same time, but it is, you know, tennis, each getting their chance to hit the ball. And while dueling against Zach, who not only is hungry, but is a very talented and, and uh, guy who, 
from the outset has said he's going to be the one to break this curse or streak or whatever. So I'm anxiously looking forward to that. How cliche, right? The quarterback's going to look for the quarterback. Yeah, <laughs> classic. <laughs> Riley, great to talk to you, man. Thanks Fun for having conversation. me on. We're, uh, we're, it's game day eve, man. And, and yeah, good luck go. on the, your radio debut. Yeah, That's thank awesome. you. And here's to a happy Friday, right? Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. yes, please. Oh, yeah. Yes, please. You can party all night with us uh, following yeah, we'll you. All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Coming up, we hear from you on the BYUSN listener line. And what is Kalani Satake's hidden talent, according to Kyle Whittingham? Oh, boy. Between the lines, Kalani on Kyle, Kyle on Kalani. Next, this is BYU Sports Nation. It's beating Utah. It's been hidden so far. If you missed the season debut of BYU football with Kalani Satake on the BYU TV app last night, don't worry. A replay is coming up right after us, and it's always on demand on the app. Here we go, BYU Sports Nation. Our game day eve coverage continues with today's BYU Sports Nation headlines once again. The season opener in rivalry format (laughs) against Utah. First time they've ever kicked off the season against each other. According to BYU. According to BYU. Utah says, in 1996. You, unless you include Brigham Young Academy, then... Was it, didn't BYU have, like, high school students in there? Yes. Yes. Dave McCann said we had a foosball team back then. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Foos. Head coach Kalani Satake spoke recently, as in last night, on his show about his team's current mental state. Our guys are really... And they're anticipating this game, and they're excited for it, and I'm... I'm excited for them because the hard work, you know, that they put in, I'm excited to see what they can do, not just this game, but the season. I think this is, just happens to be the first game of the year, and we've been chomping at the bit for this season to start. 10-20 Eastern, 7-20 Pacific, ESPN, tomorrow in Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Pre-game coverage starts on Countdown to Kickoff on BYU TV at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. BYU Radio's pre-game coverage, 15 minutes after that at 8.15 Eastern, 5.15 Pacific. Michael Davis is listed as the starting cornerback, uh, one of them, for the L.A. Chargers heading into week one. He was undrafted originally, now a starter in year three. BYU women's soccer ranked number 14 in the first regular season United Soccer Coaches poll. The ladies currently 2-0 and with wins over Alabama and Mississippi State, both on the road. BYU in their home opener against Southern Utah on Friday at Southfield. They're going to be 3-0. And the BYU men's cross-country team is ranked number two in the preseason U.S. TFC CCCA rankings, and the women's team is number six. Very nice. This week, Kalani Satake and Kyle Whittingham understandably want nothing more than to see the other guy lose as the head coach of their respective team. But the other 364 days of the year, amazingly, they're big fans of each other. Lauren McLean spoke with Bolt this week about what makes their relationship unique Amidst the rivalry, let's go between the lines. Kalani on Kyle, Kyle on Kalani. BYU Sports Nation presents Between the Lines. We had a really good connection. Our friendship goes far beyond uh, football. Takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Utah. Touchdown, BYU. Who would play Kyle in a Hollywood movie? A fit taller version of Tom Cruise. <laughs> okay. I think he would probably he should he should say Dwayne Johnson for me. <laughs> right? But he would he probably uh, will. Yeah, I, he better. Probably the Rock. I would say the <laughs> that's Rock. What he said. Really? Well, that, that's <laughs> that's the first guy that comes to mind for me. <laughs> what is Kalani's hidden talent? He's a very good impersonator. He you know, he can he can uh, he's got guys that he can impersonate very well and and uh he's very very funny i mean he is a a, a humorous guy tennis tennis yeah great tennis player what is kyle's go-to coaching phrase you're either teaching it or you're allowing it to happen (laughs) you know because one phrase might be good for one player but not another and he was very good at being able to determine which buttons to push and how to how to reach players on an individual basis if kyle weren't a college football coach what would be his next best occupation? Probably like a, a 
like a sports anchor, <laughs> TV sports anchor, or something okay. like that. Uh, he'd probably do very well in Ultimate Fighting, you know, if he wanted to go that route. And I think he has a jawline for it. Is that a re- is that a, like a, sure. a requirement? Yeah, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> I got the double chin for it. So. <laughs> What's the communication like before and after the game? This particular week in the preparation uh, for this game, there's there's uh, no communication. There is none. In the off season, we spend time together. We golf together. Uh, we have uh, several events throughout the year that we're at uh, together, and and so uh, I try to spend as much time as we can in the off season. Once we get in the football camp, it becomes all ball, and we're all focused on what we're doing with our teams. What's the interaction like before the game and then after the game? We'll break when we when we uh, before the game, and we, we leave each other before the game. We'll tell him I love him, and he tells me he loves me, and. We'll say the same thing after the game, regardless of the, the out- outcome. Yeah, I'm excited to talk to him before the game and catch up and see how he's doing and see how his family's doing and, and uh, you know, and, and Pops, you know, we used to call him Mr. Red. I guess he's Mr. Blue now, but his, dad, his dad's a great, great guy. What's one of the, the biggest things that you remember him uh, telling you when you were underneath him? Always to just be myself. You know, it was it was really cool. And, and uh, it's kind of hard when you're going to be a first-time linebackers coach, you know, and you're you're basically coaching the position that the head coach is an expert at and that he played. And so I um, always felt like I, you know, like I never had to look over my shoulder because the stuff I'm, I was teaching was what I learned from him. His passion for the game, you know, not that I'm not passionate about the game, but he is, he is so passionate about football and, and, and just the way he cares about his players, you know, he's very very tuned in to, to his players' personal lives and who they are as, as people, not football players, but as, as, uh, as people. And that's, that's something I always admire in Kalani. It's been, it's been really cool. We, we've had this great relationship for a, a long time now. When you're not playing Utah, do you still root for them? Yep, sure do. I think it, it, it baffles some people, but um, I just there's so many good people there that I know. We're so absorbed in our own game that week and, and the Pac-12 and who's doing what in the Pac-12 that we don't really have a lot of time to, to think about other things. Wishing bad things on your opponents is not good for the soul. So. <laughs> I agree with you. Yeah, I agree. it's okay. Just so, You should try it. Back in your prime, who's going to win? Back in, a, in my prime. Bracket, you're in your prime. <laughs> Who would win in a one-on-one battle against you and Kalani? Uh, he was a big physical linebacker. I was a little bit, or fullback, and I was a little bit of an undersized backer. You know, he definitely has the size advantage. So I don't know if I had to go head-to-head with him without being able to to uh, you know elude him. I, I'm not sure I'd come out on top in that one. <laughs> I know what Kyle would say, but I have to remind him that I outweighed him by probably 100 pounds. <laughs> but so but you're I, saying you would win? Yeah, he'd of say, course. I, he'd probably say he'd win just too. Plow him over. What was your first impression of Kyle? Oh, he's awesome. He's a, it's the uh, he seems really intimidating, but he, he's not like that. And so uh, we we had a really good connection. Uh, very good. You know, I, I interviewed him uh, just you know just days after I got the. The head job, and he showed up in a, a big suit and everything. And I knew he was a little uncomfortable with that suit, but <laughs> but he wanted to make a good impression and did it the right way. And my first impressions of him were just like I, I thought he would be a tough guy, but mm-hmm. um, also got to see some really cool parts of him. I, he's a he's a loving husband and a loving father, and that's the the side that a lot of people don't get to talk about. I remember he was one of the most impressionable. Uh, interviews that I've ever had. He made a big impression on me. In such an intense rivalry, how do you guys maintain your friendship? When I got to work with Kyle, he and I became really good friends, and the time that we spent together, and then he's always been a mentor to me. Well, our friendship goes far beyond uh, football. Uh, his father and my father were very close before my father passed, and so there was a some sort of a, not some sort, but a, a, a connection there to begin with. And then uh, when I met Kalani, it was uh, very obvious that, uh, you know, we were, had a lot in common and, and uh, had a lot of, uh, we thought the same way. We've had this great relationship for a, a long time now. Great stuff between the lines, Lauren McLean. Coming up, a ute in blue, is it real? And we accept a trivia challenge from one of you on the BYU Sports Nation listener line. Oh, yeah. This is BYU Sports Nation. Between the Lines is presented by Tim Daly Ford and the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. 
Get ready to rise and shout because a new season of shows are out. For starters, the Family Cooking Showdown is back with an all-new season of Dinner Takes All. Then, discover which generation really is the best in season two of Battle of the Ages. And you're up for new episodes of BYU Sports Nation, Countdown to Kickoff, and the BYU TV Sports Postgame Show. Summer may be winding down, but the competition is heating up all September on BYU TV. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Join us tomorrow night, special two-hour edition of BYU, or tomorrow uh, morning, excuse me, uh, noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, two-hour edition of BYU Sports Nation, live from Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Uh, we're going to have Ahmad Brooks on from ESPN, Max Hall, Dennis Pitta, I guess we have to have on because it's two hours, so we actually have time. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow from the stadium, game day, cannot wait. We introduced the BYU Sports Nation listener line earlier this week, and thanks to all of you, and the number is growing, who have left us messages. Now, as a reminder, you can be part of the show by leaving a 15 to 30 second voicemail. Just call 801 42 BYUSN. That's 801 422 9876. All numbers in a row. 801 42 BYUSN. Leave us a question, comment, or your reaction to anything. Today, a listener sends us a question. This is Ed Shepard calling from St. George, Utah. My key to victory is to not throw a pick six. <laughs> How many times during the winning streak for Utah has a pick six been the defense? Riddle me that. Oh, Thank my you. goodness. The pick six. Yeah, the pick six. Thorn the, in the side of BYU during the scoop this eight-game score. Oh. It brings us to our stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. Utah scored seven defensive touchdowns the last eight games versus BYU, and the answer of the pick sixes, it's four. Four pick sixes. In the current eight-game losing streak for BYU to Utah. And three scooped scores. So that's just too many, right? Yes. It's it's not like BYU has answered with a few to offset them. Because you don't have to play perfectly to beat a good team or a great team. You just have to play better than them that day, right? Um, When BYU beat Gonzaga uh, in basketball, BYU was not the better team, but they were that night, right? When BYU played Miami, BYU was ranked 16th in the country, was a really good team. They ended up being in the top five for like seven weeks. This BYU team can beat this Utah team. I firmly believe that. We saw how good BYU could be last year in that game. Well, no Huntley and Moss. Well, no Mangum and Canada, right? BYU had gone to its backups, ineptitude in one case, and injury, right? BYU didn't have Lopini Katoa in that game. If Lopini Katoa plays, does BYU rush their way to victory? I don't, it's hard to know, right? I feel like uh, both teams are, are pretty healthy, and we're going to see who the better team is on that Day. Yes, which if is both tomorrow. Kafusis don't get injured on the defensive side of the ball. Does BYU hold on to win that game? I mean, injuries were a critical factor on both sides in last year's rivalry contest. It was a big deal for Utah. It was a big deal for BYU. Seven defensive touchdowns. BYU's Whoa. had none. Oh, that's about, weird. About, Utah's won one all of those games. Yeah, how about one tomorrow? Let's that, go. That would be amazing. How about a kickoff return for a touchdown right off the bat? The kicking game and the turnover battle. Could this sway things in BYU's favor tomorrow? Let's see. Coming up, what three Cougars, uh, Cougar teams are in the top 25 now? Plus a rise and shout out to the BYU football family. What's that all about? This is BYU Sports Nation. Shout out to today's guest, former BYU quarterback Riley Nelson, getting set for his radio debut with Greg Rebell tomorrow. Kyle Whittingham, Kalani Sitake as well. Awesome. Shows on demand via the podcast and the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Let's whip it. It's time for the Cougar Whip Around Football. The long awaited season opener is tomorrow. The Cougars host number 14, Utah. Countdown to kickoff on BYU TV, live at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Cougar pregame live 15 minutes later. Games on ESPN, 1020 Eastern kick scheduled. Post game on BYU TV and BYU radio. And the game day replay will be on BYU TV as soon as the post game show's over. Soccer. The BYU women ranked number 14 in the first regular season United Soccer Coaches poll. BYU currently 2-0 with wins against Alabama and Mississippi State. Home opener Friday on against Southern Utah, I should say, at Southfield at 8 Mountain. Cross country. The men's team's ranked number two in the preseason USTFTCCCCA rankings, and the women's team is number six. Mm. 
Cougars in the NFL. Michael Davis, the starting cornerback for the Los Angeles Chargers of San Diego, heading into week one, undrafted and cut by the Chargers in 2017, then signed as a practice player, and now he's starting. And Kyle Van Noy receives the Patriots 2019 Ron Burton Community Service Award for his involvement and work in the community, specifically with the Van Noy Naylor Foundation. Today's rise and shout outs now for me, Jeremy, it goes to the video and the coordinating efforts from BYU football to put out the football family presentation, helping us all remember that these athletes are more than just players and their families agonize and celebrate and go through all of this. That's awesome. Oh, it's so, it's so good. Yeah, that's great. You see the Kafusis, the Wilsons, the Lees, the Tongas, all in there, Brady Christensen's wife. It's nice to see them humanized and for us to remember. And Tristan Hodge is oh, my favorite BYU oh, fan now. The, Tristan Hodge's dad. Can we just roll it back Yes, to Tristan Hodge right there? Oh, my gosh. He's fantastic. My, uh, my rise to chat out goes to Britton Johnson's neighbors, former uh, Utah men's basketball player on the Final Four team there. He said, someone with mad Photoshop skills decorated my brother Joe's lawn last night. Seeing myself <laughs> in a BYU jersey next to Majerus is disturbing. <laughs> he lives right up in Newland, so I'm sure his neighbors were probably confused and probably laughing. So that's really funny. Holy cow, that if, is hilarious. <laughs> the picture of him in the BYU jersey next to Majerus is amazing. Yeah, it's like weird. That it's is like amazing. Weird. Would have been nice to Unnatural. have him really playing for BYU. <laughs> Our question of the day, what are you doing today to prepare for BYU in Utah and the game tomorrow? Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort, Joseph Felt, answers on Twitter. A combination of a few things. Purging my house of anything red. Hey, we did that on set. Purge pile. Preparing my world-famous salsa, saying a prayer or two, and singing the cougar fight song routinely for good vibes. Hashtag BYUSN. Hashtag hey. we got this. Sorry to Dennis Pitt. I ran out of time. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use hashtag BYUSN. The next time we will hang out with you, we'll be at the stadium on game day. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's so amazing. <laughs> that is such an amazing fact. For Jerem, I am Spencer. Shout out to Ty Detmer. BYU Football with Kalani Satake airs next. Go Cougs.